Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka John, Eureka Street Crypto Hub, broadcasting live on Theta TV at 5.36 in the morning. It is April 27th, 2021, and I'm broadcasting from Leander, Texas, just a little suburb of Austin, Texas. And um, <clears throat> yes, this is my my morning crypto video blog that I do. And uh, nothing's perfect, nothing ever will be. This is not highly produced, not pre-recorded, not edited, um, nothing. This is just my video blog that I do every morning to explore cryptocurrency. Um, I vaguely kind of think of some kind of basic topics I wanna to talk about just from stuff that I have looked over from the day before or just along this road in general. Um, I started this broadcast October 24th, 2020, and then I've been going consecutively every single morning since February 6, 2021, have not missed a day, and uh, <clears throat> every single day I discover something new. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sponsored by anybody, I'm not shilling anything, and uh, yeah, I don't make money from this, I, I can't, I'm keeping my day job, <laughs> so... Um, you don't got to worry about that. Um, this is all bias. It's all stuff that I like and that I want to research. And uh, don't take my advice for anything. Uh, you know, I'm definitely not a professional. And I appreciate all the feedback that people have given me um, and th other new things to discover and talk about, or just um, you know, some things I may have gotten wrong too. I'm all down with that. So um, I just don't want to bug my friends and family about cryptocurrency. So this is my outlet. So uh, this is me reaching out to you. Um, so if there's anything you want to talk about and you want me to talk about on my show, I'll be happy to explore it. Um, I'm open game. I'm all ears with the cryptocurrency space. So let me know. Let a brother know. <clears throat> um, but yeah, um, here, let's start. <laughs> Uh, I always uh, I've been starting lately with the traffic report, just like a morning show. <laughs> yeah, got to keep it real, right? Check out the traffic update. Um, I'm just missing the helicopter noise in the background. That's that's all I need. You know, Steve with the tractor. <laughs> I, I, this is some old uh, radio guy in Austin that would always give the traffic report. I can't remember his name, but he was pretty great. Um, and it was, that was probably that was a long time ago. Um, and then in Houston, where I was born and raised, they had another traffic report guy. And, you know, he'd always be like shouting into the mic, <laughs> trying to talk over the helicopter noise. Um, so we have um, this Transaction Street going on right here. And uh, Transaction Street is uh, <clears throat> a little app that kind of visualizes the current traffic on the Ethereum blockchain and the Bitcoin blockchain right here. And these cars or the buses or subway cars or whatever you want to call them act like uh, they're, they're the blocks and all the people, this is where they're coming from, all these different protocols and then just down from the general public here, um, getting on to the blockchain and right here is what's called the meme pool. It's basically the waiting area for transactions before they uh, get put onto the block. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see here, uh, median gas price is 5175 uh, 277 US dollars for just transferring from wallet to wallet. Uh, median contract fee, like a smart contract, uh, something you would find in DeFi or something like that, is $18.41. Gas is super cheap yesterday, and if you didn't watch the video that I put out yesterday, uh, I go through some of the reasons why gas could be so cheap. So, uh, yeah, check out that video. And, um, and they've also, whenever there's high transactions, uh, high transaction traffic, uh, you may have noticed a little window pop up that uh, <clears throat> had a low transaction limit bar, but you can't see it right now because traffic is not high at all. So this is pretty amazing, honestly. See right here, the low fee line, and uh, it's kind of separating all the people out who are um, in MetaMask, use the little low fee option, and, uh, and you know, the people that are doing the more high speed transactions um, they don't have to be below this low fee line because that's what it all is. It's all about the money and whoever pays the most gets the fastest transactions. And these are all the different places they're coming from. Crypto Kitties, uh, you got uh, Compound, Balancer, um, you know, and all that stuff. And here's Bitcoin over here. Um, so everything's pretty cheap right now. Uh, Bitcoin seems a little clogged up though, uh, but Bitcoin's always clogged up. 
So Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty much the only networks that are always clogged up. I don't think any other networks have that this type of traffic right now. So, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's go to CoinGecko, take a quick look, and see what the market looks like today, because I haven't even looked today. Um, I literally get out of bed and come downstairs and roll in here and turn on my, my tube and see what the deal is. I think this needs to be refreshed from last night. Okay, so we're sitting at 54604.26. Um, they're getting back up from that $49,000 mark and everybody's screaming blood in the streets and all that stuff and losing their freaking minds over oh, uh, you know, just some basic uh, you know, market settlement. So, you know, I, I, I wasn't worried at all. I, <clears throat> I bought the freaking dip and I uh, wish I had more money. To buy more dip, I got paid last Friday, and I, I, you know, I, I bought, I went a little crazy and bought some more than I usually normally do because I saw the dip was a little, running a little harder than normal. And if I had more money, I would still be keeping dumping into certain uh, projects today, as well as dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin like I always do. So uh, yeah, but uh, I don't have an unlimited supply of money, unfortunately. Uh, my name ain't Elon Musk. So it's just John, and I have a pretty standard name. So yeah, Bitcoin's 54605, Ethereum 2500, back up to 2500. So that's looking good. I think it's going to be going to 3000 pretty soon. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with Ethereum. Hey, how you doing, 29L06? Nice to see you today. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff going on right now with Ethereum, and um, I would uh, definitely. I mean, this is just me, but. Yeah, get prepared, get prepared. Uh, Binance Coin 561.92, so it's doing pretty good. XRP, $1.42, that's also doing good. Tethered being tethered, just lonely little tethered. And the number one stable coin, not doing crap, but being a dollar. Here I'm just a dollar, that's all I'll ever be. Um, Cardano, $1.30. Um, so a lot of the stuff is in the green. I mean, you can't not be in the green from the past week. Um, Dogecoin, $0.27, cents, still sitting in the seventh place. I, this just blows my mind that Dogecoin is even in the top 10. Polkadot, $34.47. Uniswap, $40.05. Litecoin, $254.31. Bitcoin Cash, $862.30. Chainlink, $36.30. I do think we'll be seeing some moves from Chainlink. And then Theta down here at 11.65. You know, these are just the coins that I pay attention to. Um, there's a lot of others, like Aave is making waves. There's a lot of stuff going on with Aave and Layer 2 protocols and Matic and Polygon and all that stuff that I need to do a video about. Maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, keep an eye out for Aave. And I have a bunch of Aave staked, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, yeah, it got a long time ago, because uh, it was the first protocol I actually learned how to use in the DeFi world. Uh, Ave and synthetics were, which is weird because I don't even understand derivatives, derivatives barely to this day. But uh, the synthetics is down here at 1661. Celsius 609. I just bought into some engine last Friday, so that was my entry point, and I'm glad I did. Um, Zilliqa 18 cents, doing very well. Um, yeah, so. And uh, let me take a quick look at one more token up here. It'll be uh, Unibright. U B. T Unibrat and dollar um, seventy four is down a little bit. Um, yeah, okay, but whatever. Yeah, I paid like pennies on the dollar for that thing um, back in the day. Oh, there's one more too. Rocket Pool um, Ethereum staking for everybody. It democratizes and decentralizes Ethereum staking. Nineteen oh three, so it's doing very very good. Um, so this is if you want to stake Ethereum and you don't want to have it locked up till Ethereum 2.0 fully rolls out, uh, well, Rocket Pool's a way to go, and you can get the Rocket Pool token in exchange or R ETH, and that way you can buy and sell as needed. And then you can also have the RPL uh, governance token, and obviously it's doing very well in 1903. So look into Rocket Pool. I did a video on it a couple times actually, but like a proper video um, last fall. Okay. So I want to get into what I wanted to talk about here. Uh, I discovered this amazing new project, and it is called the BISC Network. Um, let me just get to the to the home page here. BISC Network is a completely decentralized exchange, and it's not like a DEX, like a, a Uniswap or anything like that. This is um, <clears throat> completely under the radar. Uh, it is. Uh, I, I discovered this. The float app 
does they 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 did a conference or a summit an online summit over the weekend called uh, uh, the Greater Reset and um, you know they're kind of like a Twitter and all that stuff um, but uh, yeah they put it on I was like okay great you know another one of these blockchain summits that are online where you just watch a bunch of people speak well I ended up gleaning so much inf information from that summit and they talked about agorism and uh, cryptocurrency and alternative economies and stuff like that and how to get involved and, and uh, become part of an alternate economy or at least know what they are and then if things get a little too oppressive in your own culture or your own nation state and stuff like that then you have other alternatives rather than to be able to follow the uh, assigned narrative that you're supposed to follow within the uh, fiat and banking system and stuff like that so it's super interesting and bisc network kept coming up so uh, hey what's up jben 1300 um, nice to see you. I've seen you on here before as well. So um, yeah, BISC Network kept on um, being brought up. And uh, so I was just like, all right, I'll go check this thing out. Dude, it's like, it's like you're out with a bunch of friends uh, down in Tulum, Mexico. And you go diving in the cenotes, right? And uh, you come across this cenote and you're by yourself diving, right? And you, even though you're never supposed to be by yourself diving. But uh, say you're by yourself diving and you discover like this cenote cavern that's just full of gold treasures and boxes and every single maze, uh, tunnel in this maze of cenotes and all these underwater caves, that's what a cenote is. <laughs> so, don't mean to be condescending, but uh, say you're going through these cenotes and you discover this like network of underground caves with nothing but gold lined walls and treasure chests and everything like that. And you're just by yourself and you're like, holy crap. And so you have to go up for air and you know that there's so much more down there, but you have to go up for air and you have to uh, tell your friends about it on the shore. And you're like, oh my God, dude, there's this cave and it has all this amazing stuff in it and I, I've only just seen it. So let's go down there together. Let's go take a look. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now here for you. I discovered Bisque Network and this is an entire cave network, a rabbit hole, a treasure trove cave network full of information and new ideas that I've never heard of. And just when I start thinking that I have a handle on cryptocurrency and DeFi and all of the new stuff coming out and stuff like that, when I think, okay, all right, I have a firm footing here. And then suddenly I discover something like this. I'm just like, oh my God, dude, I really, I am absolutely an amateur. So what is BISC Network? Buy and sell Bitcoin for fiat or other cryptocurrencies privately and securely using BIS peer-to-peer -peer network and open source desktop software. No registration required. It is a way to get around doing any KYC whatsoever from fiat to Bitcoin. It is an entry, entry ramp, an on-ramp to Bitcoin and to cryptocurrency world using absolutely no fiat. And I've heard people on the Bankless broadcast and you know on several other broadcasts sit there and say, well, you know, unfortunately, the only way to get into the crypto world is, uh, you know, you have to use your bank as an on-ramp. And then after that, you're good and you can go bankless. That's absolutely not true. There are ways to get started in the cryptocurrency space um, with from fiat to crypto without showing your ID and without going through the institutional banks. Um, I mean, yeah, you would have to use your, your not credit card, but your bank card or something like that. Or you could do it peer to peer and give somebody cash face to face in real world and then have them um, get you started on the BISC network. You know, I mean, there's just, there are ways of doing this. Um, and you could go to a Bitcoin ATM and from there, you know, use your bank card at a Bitcoin ATM and then get started that way. But there are ways to get around using KYC and then doing the picture of your driver's license and then holding up the sign saying, you know, for whatever XX exchange, you know, and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> BISC Network is a way to get around that. And uh, it's a little complex and it's, it's an, it, you're not going to get it cheap. Um, so anonymity is not cheap. And there are ways, but it, um, what, you say, people say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. What does it matter? Um, it always matters. Your privacy nowadays, and especially after people have seen what has happened with a lot of the mainstream centralized entities like Netflix and YouTube and Twitter and all that stuff and Instagram, Facebook censoring 
and banning people for things that they might say that might not go along 100% with the current current narrative. Um, you know, and uh, using things like that as evidence against them, you know, it's, it's sometimes stuff people say is absolutely harmless. It just goes against the narrative. So this is a way to get around that stuff. And your transactions are part of that privacy too. Like for instance, I'll use a personal anecdote because this is my video blog. So whatever, you know, I, uh, institutions like to use well-meaning systems to further their bureaucratic agenda. Okay. Um, case in point, child support, child support. I mean, yes, you don't want deadbeat dads who does, you know, you, you, you want a dad to pay their fair share for something, um, that, you know, for, and not neglect the fact that they, you know, have had a child. Um, however, the child support system is being abused and it is being used as a tool to, uh, to siphon money, um, even out of well-meaning, um, moms and dads. So, uh, somebody can go through a retroactive child support process in which the state may think that you could have at a certain point in time have paid more for child support than you were paying at the time. And so they go through a discovery process, which is basically a warrant to go into all your bank accounts and everything that you've done for the past three years before a certain time. And um, they will determine whether or not they think you could have paid more. Now, imagine you're running your own small business, like a lawn care company or whatever. Uh, and then things start to get a little weird because business expenses and personal expenses start to become gray and not black and white. But the fact is you have somebody else coming in there, especially from a bureaucratic point of view, wanting to make a profit, um, looking at every single thing that you're doing and what you've bought and what you spent money on, what you may have, and uh, trying to seize a large significant portion of that um, it, on top of something, even if you've already paid off child support. So um, these are reasons why people may want to go uh, dark with a lot of their transactions is fully understandable in cases like that. And there, those cases like that are increasing more and more and more, uh, the larger our bureaucratic operation gets. Like I said, taking a good cause and twisting the narrative for the perpetuation of bureaucracy and, uh, the, the state apparatus. So, um, so here comes BISC. It's a decentralized exchange. You don't have KYC. You don't have banks or any any other entity looking into your records and knowing that you know. Oh well, he bought cryptocurrency from this exchange at this date and time, and uh, you know this is how much he spent and all that stuff. So uh, this is a way to get around doing that. It is a downloadable um, app. You can download it to Linux or, uh, windows or Mac or uh, a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and I have a window here that shows it. Uh, let me pull it up above here. So this is basically that, um, this is really my, uh, first time looking at all this stuff. So, you know, pardon me if I say stuff wrong here, I'm, uh, really looking at all this stuff with you. I don't even know how to use this. I don't know if I'm going to use this. Um, but I can see the reasoning behind it. And, um, you know, so it's a peer to peer Bitcoin buying and selling network. And, uh, you can do it from fiat. You can do it from a bunch of different currencies. You can trade other cryptocurrencies back and forth to each other. Um, you know, just because you may be in a country or a locale that, uh, prohibits certain things doesn't mean you need to be, uh, a victim of your government's wrongdoings. So yeah, interesting stuff here. Uh, let's learn a little more. And actually, uh, yeah, Bitcoin uses, uh, BISC network uses the concept of colored coins, which is the transference of property as well. Um, colored coins, I knew I'd heard that before. It's in Camila Russo's book. Vitalik Buterin started and developed Ethereum based off the concept of color coins and master coin and everything like that. And if you look at chapter five in this book called The Swiss Knife, it starts with the whole foundation and basis of colored coins and uh, basically colored coins are like the precursor to NFTs and the transfer of value.
Um, anyway, that's getting a little off topic right now, but uh, let's look. I always go to frequently asked questions. How is BISC different from other decentralized exchanges? It's a peer-to-peer -peer trading network, not a centralized service. It's a software you run on your own hardware, not a website run by someone else's. It's open source and community driven, and you can trade Bitcoin for fiat currencies with it. The difference between BISC and other so-called decentralized exchanges is as stark as the difference between owning your own home and renting someone else's. In the former case, you have full control over the property, and in the latter, you're subject to the landlord's whims and demands, no matter how nice the landlord may seem to be. Uh, with BISC, you're always the owner, not just the owner of your Bitcoin, but also the owner of your data. Uh, it doesn't hold any Bitcoin. Um, all trading is a two to, held in two of two multi-signature addresses controlled solely by the trading peers themselves. It does not hold any national currency. National currency is transferred directly from one trader to the other using traditional banking and payment services. Um, BISC data is transferred over its own secure peer-to-peer -peer network, which is built on top of the Tor network, no central servers. This means there's no data honeypots rendering large-scale hacks of customer information uh, databases impossible. It does not know anything about traders who use its network, and no data is stored on with who, with trades, who, on who trades with who. It does not require registration. It means user privacy is protected, and it means there's no waiting period to have your account approved for trading. It's not BISC is code, not a company. It's an open source project organized as a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO built on top of Bitcoin. Um, is it open source and safe? Uh, yes, it's open sourced, licensed under the version three, the new uh, general public license. Um, there's a source code right there. You can go into GitHub and GitHub and check it out yourself. If you don't know, GitHub is a repository for all open source code for anybody to be able to look on and expand upon and everything like that. It's kind of uh, uh, code. It's code developer etiquette to put their stuff on uh, GitHub to show some transparency and to show that they're contributing to the community. Um, BISC employs three primary mechanisms to achieve security. All Bitcoin is traded with BISC is in a two of two multi-sig address. Uh, both traders are required to pay security deposits. They're refunded after trades are completed and trade disputes are handled through a three-tier mechanism that includes trader chat, mediation, and arbitration. Now, uh, with a security deposit, you got to have around like 0 0.01 Bitcoin, which is, uh, I don't know, I think it's around like 500 and si between five and six hundred dollars, I think, right now. And you got to lay it down and put a deposit on, and it shows your intentions. And both people do it, and they put it into a multi signature address, which is basically a, a Bitcoin address with two different keys, and a lot of times uh, multi sig addresses, uh, or you can have as many keys as you want. And then you can also assign a certain amount of keys that are required in order to be able to have an action being done. It's kind of like having a, a three keys to nuclear warheads and uh, you have to have you know, the Secretary of State, the President, and then maybe some random um, House of Representatives person all put their keys in to have extra security to make sure uh, nukes aren't just fired off because somebody's in a bad mood that day. Um, so um, let's see here. Uh, let me see. There's a few other ones. Um, so if you don't want to spend that five hundred and sixty-seven dollars for uh, fiat on ramp, and you want to uh, uh, get cryptocurrency without doing that, there are ways you can do that. Uh, let's see here. Um, Funding your wallet, how to obtain your first Bitcoin. If you don't already, because if you already have Bitcoin, that deposit is no big deal. Um, if you don't have any Bitcoin, uh, then you can, there's some ways you can do it um, without actually buying Bitcoin on a centralized exchange. Um, how much do you need? In addition to covering a security deposit as described above, traders need to cover mining fees and trading fees. Estimates for both are shown in the interface when making or taking an offer. As of this writing, a safe estimate for buying your first Bitcoin on BISC with fiat is 0 0.002 Bitcoin. Um, not sure exactly how much that is. Let's see here. 0 0.002 BTC in dollars. Um, I can kind of like in my head translate Ethereum prices to dollars, but I'm not quite there yet with Bitcoin. I'm working on it. So let's see here. Uh, hey, what's up, Italaro? Nice to see you. I've seen you on here before too. Man, I'm getting a lot of returning people coming on the broadcast. I appreciate it. Um, 
And I'd love to know where you guys are, are uh, listening from. I'm always curious about that. So let's see here, 0 0.002 Bitcoin to US dollars, uh, 109 bucks. Okay, so roughly about 109, a little over $100. Um, if that is, if it's 0 0.01, probably be about five or 600 bucks. Um, so yeah, these are some ideas on how to obtain your first Bitcoin wallet. And here's how you can get Bitcoin privately without uh, using some kind of uh, exchange centralized exchange friends and family know anybody who already has some bitcoin they might be willing to help and arrange them to pay back through a trade on BIS. so you ask somebody for a uh, um, uh, a deposit you know just to help you out hey i need to get this deposit done so i can trade and buy my own bitcoin on BISC. and so that's a way to do it there's bitcoin atms some bitcoin atms don't require id for smaller purchases, and some don't require any id at all um, uh, Oh, Peruvian living in Spain is where you tell where I from. Nice. The Joe Lo Español también. And then uh, 29LH06 is uh, uh, from Virginia. All right, man. Yeah. Virginia Hillbilly or Virginia Government Virginia? There's two types of Virginias. <laughs> okay, so uh, Bitcoin ATMs. Yes, there are some Bitcoin ATMs probably near you. There's a coin ATM radar. And um, let's see here. Uh, muchas gracias para, para complimentando mi español. Um, okay, so Bitcoin ATM near me search. Okay, I live in Leander, Texas. The zip code for Leander, Texas is 78651. Let's see here. Um, okay. Uh, so look at all these. Oh, uh, oh uh, yeah, I have a VPN, <laughs> um, a VPN on, so... Of course, it's going to find um, Bitcoin locations in all these locations, <laughs> in these weird locations. So, uh, ignoring my v VPN, um, it would find Bitcoin ATMs near me. Now, last night I had it off, so it found, like, I, I would say about 15 uh, Bitcoin ATM locations in my uh, North Austin suburban area. So, uh, that's... I, I think that's pretty cool. I had no idea there were so many Bitcoin ATMs. Actually, there's a Bitcoin ATM just right around the right around the um, the corner from me, and I was like, "Damn, man!" The yeah, a friend of mine asked. He's like, he's he's severely off the grid. He's what you would call a gray man, and um, he uh, is just like, "Well, I want to get started in Bitcoin, but like, I don't really, you know, use credit cards, and I don't, you know, this and that." I was like, "Well, you know, if you have cash." Just go to a Bitcoin ATM and put the, Bit the the cash into the Bitcoin ATM and then you'll get the Q code and you can just, you know, go from there and use your phone or whatever. Um, so he tries to be off the grid as much. He doesn't do social media, no, no nothing like that. And uh, so this is a way that he could buy Bitcoin, I guess. Um, uh, 29 LHS in Virginia Hillbilly. All right, like Roanoke and all that stuff. Yeah, I've driven through there. You know, there's some actually really cool skate parks over there. Skatopias, I believe, in West Virginia too. That dude's crazy, man. But amazing skate skateboard compound. Um, anyway, off topic. Uh, <laughs> do you offer a product or service? Uh, use Bitcoin Pay Server to collect Bitcoin for it. Otherwise. Don't forget about local mar marketplaces like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Many people are willing to buy and sell everyday goods for Bitcoin. So if you want to enter the Bitcoin market without using some kind of centralized exchange, then you could um, you know, offer some kind of good or service and then get paid. You know, set up some kind of anonymous wallet and then get paid by Bitcoin in that way. Work for it. While sites and gigs may pay in Bitcoin, never really panned out. It might not hurt. Let a client or business contact know you accept it. Uh, meetups, you can, uh, people at uh, Bitcoin meetups might have Bitcoin crazy, right? Um, unfortunately, because of COVID and uh, people have not been meeting up, but I think that is changing now. Um, so, and I think that's great that people are now starting to meet up again, regardless of what they're being told. So, uh, vouchers, companies like Fast Bitcoins and Asta sell, sell vouchers at physical stores around the world for cash. There aren't a whole lot of locations yet, but more are being added all the time. Oh, that's interesting. Fastbitcoins.com and Asta.co. Okay, I'll be checking those out, man. Um, so, interesting stuff, great ways to onboard. Uh, the Tor Network, like I said, it is a DAO and. Um, Here's a whole bunch of different websites. I'll be linking all this stuff in, in the web page. Again, like I said, this is like my first look at all this stuff. There is a BISC token that the network uses, 
um, in order to be able to uh, to do stuff on here and uh, let's see here the bisque dowel um, so this trading feed bisque network compensation contributor improvements trader and then the bisque colored coin so the BSQ coin is a bisque colored coin it's used to basically pay the contributors and that's why I went on this little colored coin tangent because it is basically the precursor to an NFT. It allows you to write a little bit of code assigning property value um, and to tokenize assets on directly onto layer one of the Bitcoin blockchain. And then now colored coins, I believe it started out as layer one, then it moved to layer two. Um, and I, I know on my phone, I found, where the hell is my phone? I think I left it in the other room. I found a really good website that showed a good graph of how colored coins operate. But if you do have this book, it's in chapter five. So take a look at that. Um, so what is the BISC DAO? Through the BISC token, colored Bitcoin, the BISC DAO enables value transfer from traders to contributors without centrally held bank accounts or wallets. Um, this enables trading fees to be distributed to project contributors without any banks, corporations, or the other legal entities, keeping BISC stateless and sovereign. Uh, interesting. And then how does it work? Revenue distribution. To distribute revenue from trading fees to contributors, BISC uses BSQ, a Bitcoin-based colored, based colored coin. Contributors are issued new BSQ for the work, and BSQ is burned when traders use it to pay trading fees. There's no central entity that collects or creates BISC. BISC stakeholders vote on each issuance request. There was never an ICO and no BSQ sold to raise capital. Decision making with no CEO or central leadership team, BISC stakeholders, traders, and contributors are owners of BISC. Through social consensus via voting, they determine BISC project strategy. Um, traders make BISC sustainable, help BISC discover consistent professional development and support by buying BSQ from contributors help make BISC the go-to censorship resistant Bitcoin to fiat and Bitcoin to crypto marketplace. Enjoy a discount if you use BSQ to pay trading fees. You can still pay trading fees with plain Bitcoin if you like. Uh, contributors earn BSQ, do valuable work, request compensation, earn BSQ, sell BSQ on BISC for Bitcoin, vote on compensation requests from other contributors, work on cutting edge technology with a cutting edge culture. BISC, is collaboration. BISC collaboration is permissionless, non-hierarchical and fluid. So, um, wow, there's a, you know, there's little videos you can watch all over this website. This website goes super, super deep. Um, there is a BISC wiki as well. Um, the BISC DAO in brief, I watched this video, it's pretty good. Um, here's the BISC token, the contributors create the BISC, um, the traders, they buy the BISC, the colored coins on the Bitcoin blockchain that enable stakeholders to take part in the BISC DAO right here. There's the software. Contributors maintain it, traders use it, the BSQ is destroyed. Um, uh, you can post a bond with a BISC to, uh, to fill a high trust role. It can be confiscated by the stakeholders if the contributors go rogue. Uh, spend, when traders spend BSQ tokens to pay trading fees, those BSQ tokens are burned and gone forever. So, wow, this is so much stuff. Um, I don't even, I'm gonna have to, uh, Definitely spend some time and maybe make a more uh, uh, detailed video on all this stuff. And here's the whole BISC wiki. Um, you can just look at all this stuff. Oh man, like I said, cenotes with uh, jewelry and coin and treasure lined walls. And I've just now looked into the very first tunnel. And uh, okay, man. All right, let's, let's get started doing this deal. Um, I'll do some research. Right now I'm working on a video on the uh, cryptocurrency Komodo. And when I finish that, I think BISC Network is gonna be my next like project oriented video. There's a lot of work to do here. Um, I've only just scratched the surface. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna link all this stuff and hopefully you will uh, do your own research as well and look into it. Maybe you can help me out and figure out some key points, some things that I might miss and stuff like that, or areas which you think it would be important for me to highlight. I'd appreciate that. So yeah, man, um, I gotta get to work and I gotta go get this day started, but uh, this, this is just the beginning, man. All right, um, 
You guys have a good day. Be nice to each other. Be nice to me in the comments or whatever. You can give me a thumbs up on YouTube. I'd appreciate it. If you're on Odyssey, uh, give me that little flame icon. If you're on BitChute, give me a thumbs up. If you're on BitTube, give me a thumbs up. Um, BTCST. Yes, I, ha I own BTCST and I, uh, uh, I'm doing very well with BTCST. Thanks to Tyler Roll. I did an episode on it a few, uh, about a week ago, but uh, it was sounded the sound was terrible because I was at a hotel. But I'm going to reapproach that. So yes, uh, thanks, thank you, Tyler Roll, for suggesting BTCST token. That is basically tokenized Bitcoin hash rate. If you are not familiar with that, you should definitely check it out along with the Tal protocol. Uh, my YouTube link. Um, you can find me, just go into YouTube and go into Eureka Street Crypto Hub. Just do a search for that, Eureka Street Crypto Hub, you will find me. Um, and I'm on Instagram here, and I think my YouTube link is there. And then I'm on, and not Instagram, Twitter. And I'm on Instagram as well, Eureka Street Crypto Hub. And then I'm on Float App right here, and I'm under Eureka John. Um, and then, yeah, so, and then I'm on BitTube, which is uh, right here, BitTube, and I believe that's from Spain as well. So, um, uh, you tell Raul, um, you might be familiar with BitTube. So, um, okay, I will talk to you guys um, tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I like to listen to some Mozart sometimes. All right, man, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.